Well, today here on Great Day Live and across WHAS 11, you're going to notice that our team is wearing purple. That is because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We are wearing purple to show our support for survivors and to take a stand against domestic violence. I am joined this morning by President and Chief Empowerment Officer at the Center for Women and Families, Elizabeth Martin, with more on this day and the month and, and how we're, we're saying a lot Right. by wearing this color absolutely today. great to have you here oh, thank you so much for having us and always highlighting domestic violence and it's it's an important thing obviously to take a stand for but just the ways that we're doing it right, right. seeing mm -hmm. that color it prompts that question why are you wearing it and in a great way to open up a, a dialogue about supporting survivors and remembering victims absolutely and it is uh, wear purple day across the state uh, we were at the Capitol yesterday with the governor, um, honoring not only survivors who have fought very hard to save their lives and the lives of their children, but also the victims who have lost their lives um, to domestic violence and intimate partner violence. Now you've worked closely with the governor's office mm -hmm. um, and there, there are many offices to make changes to protect yes. survivors, yes. right? To, to put things into place to say, no more. Right, <laughs> right, right. I mean, what can you highlight like some of the things that have happened just even over the last year? So several years ago, um, Senator Julie Rocky Adams was successful in finally passing the strangulation or bill um, where strangulation is now considered to be a felony. Yeah. Many people unfortunately think when they think of strangulation, they think that somebody has actually died. And so to, we will use the term choking in many times, but strangulation is a horrible yeah. form of domestic violence that often does result in death, but sometimes it does not, but it can result in long lasting, life impacting um, symptoms that we see oftentimes at the center with those who've been strangled. Well, today we're wearing our purple. Next week, you're going to speak their names we on October are. the 24th. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yes, that event. So the public is, is open. They're welcome to attend this. You know, I feel like we've all been impacted right by this. Right. I feel like we all know somebody that we can support or that we need to support. Well, if you think about it, Claudia, one in three women and one in five men in the state of Kentucky have been victims of domestic violence at some point in their life. And so many people that we know have often grown up in family violence. So when you think of somewhere along the way, we have all been touched by domestic intimate partner violence in our lives. Again, either we know it We've come from it, we've personally experienced it, and that's really important. September 24th is our annual Speak Their Name event, and that is when we're going to honor 11 victims of domestic violence. Um, it is something we do, it's a very somber event, but it's a very, very powerful event. We have invited family members of those that lost their lives to come to the center and place the flower on their chair as each one of the 11 names will be read. And again, we never, ever, want to forget those who've lost their lives no. to such a horrible crime. The public can attend, encourage to attend, and I think the more people that can attend, it's a symbolic effort of how we're all standing together. Absolutely, right? absolutely. You're gonna hear from several different speakers coming at this from different angles. But this is a public health issue. Yeah. This is not a personal issue, it's not a family, it's not a center issue. This is a public health issue because the ripple effect of domestic violence is very, very large. Mm -hmm. And we need to look at it as a public health issue. Mm -hmm. We also need to look at it as oftentimes the core of so many crimes that happen in our community. Mm -hmm. Youth violence, where do people think the youth are coming from? They're coming from broken homes where they've seen family violence. Yeah. So it's time to speak up and speak loudly. Sometimes do you do you often notice that the more that you hear from victims that come to the Center for Women and Families, that that helps you make your services even more wide reaching, maybe even we need to add this or that. We need, we're not right. doing this, right? right? We absolutely do. One of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to meet survivors where they are. We reach out to them. We don't expect them to come to us because well, that may not be possible. How hard is that to do sometimes? It's very, very yeah. difficult. It's very difficult. And so we are in all seven counties and we have advocates in all seven counties. And we, you know, wherever a survivor is in their journey, whether they have never had a physical altercation or now they're having to co-parent with their batterer, yeah. we're gonna meet them where they are and not expect them to fit into our mold. Mm -hmm. We fit into their world. We also know that survivors are the architect of their journey. They know what they need much better than we do. So it's important to listen, listen to survivors. Are there other ways that people can show their support? I know sometimes you'll have like donation drives, just simple basic things that, that we all can maybe be involved in some way and yeah. help. 
Well, the first one is also monetary. Everything okay, that yeah. we do is 100% free. So we are completely dependent upon contributed giving, grants, and, and all of that puzzle, if you will. Um, but giving money is very important. A dollar, a hundred dollars, ten dollars, whatever people can give. And then volunteering their time is really important. You can volunteer in a vast array of areas. If you're not comfortable working directly with people, we've got a lot of administrative opportunities. And then various donation drives. We often need diapers and little diapers um, and big diapers. We have a lot of, right now we have, I think almost 20 children at oh this center. Goodness. We brought in a family of seven last night at 1130. Um, and these are, these are small children. So we need diapers of all sizes. We need hygiene products and feminine hygiene pro mm -hmm. products. As we know, those are expensive. Yeah. They certainly are. Thank you so much for Absolutely. what you do. And I think too, the volunteers you have for what they do uh, They're amazing. as well. So wear purple today. Wear purple. Recognize those wearing purple. Have that discussion. And if people can show up next week, that please, please come out Jefferson Square Park at noon next Tuesday, the 24th to speak their name. And let's remember the victims who lost their lives. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you. For more information, just head on over to centeronline.org.